Okay, so today we have a PM 728. Uh, we've already taken it apart simply because we have several videos of other machines that we've torn apart. They all come apart pretty much the same. If you uh, have any questions about any of it, if you go on the site and get the instructions for the PM25 or the PM30, it will show you everything that you need to know to take this machine apart. So, Okay, the one thing that we do want to show you how to take apart is this for the Z-axis. Um, it could be a little bit tricky. So you have here, you have this lock nut here and you've also got set screws for, for this gear right here. So you need to loosen up, this, there's two set screws. You need to loosen those up and then you're gonna loosen the head up a little bit and you're gonna have to drop the head down. And when you do, this whole thing will slide, slide down out of this gear and you can take this gear off. And once you do that, then you can grab this and it'll come right out of here without any problems. Okay, we're gonna start with Y put it on it's got the uh, offset he's just gonna lift the machine up just a little bit to get underneath it and then it'll slide back up into this thing through the hole here so at that point you want to line up the block with that little boss that's on there and that little boss will slide into into the hole that's in there for it and then you can just put the screw on and we're good to go now we're not going to tighten anything up completely tight because we need to check the alignment, we need to check binding, we need to check all of those things. So <clears throat> once this gets tightened on there, then we'll go to the motor mount. Okay, so now we're gonna put the motor mount on. Uh, you're gonna see, we took the quarter inch plate off of the mount itself because we need to get in here to bolt it down so put the bearings in put the jam nuts on this finger tighten that should be enough as long as there's no slack this is where i used to Here I got a special wrench that I grind uh, a little bit thinner so it will fit in between the jam nuts. So Now we found out that because these machines come with a little toolbox with these wrenches in there, um, you can use one of those wrenches so you don't screw up your, your good set of wrenches and uh, you can grind one of those down uh, to, to do all of this. All right, so now you slid it back and we're going to just uh, screw those into the to the base and we'll be good to go okay so now we're gonna he's tightened everything down we're gonna check and make sure that everything is moving free so he's just got a socket with an extension on it so we can move it back and forth and make sure it runs smooth like so perfect now if it doesn't then there's adjustments on the uh 
on the Y axis, there's slots in there. You can loosen that back up and you can adjust things around to get, to get everything uh, lined up correctly. But it should line up pretty good without much uh, problems. Okay, so now we're gonna put the X axis on there. If you can see the, the offset of the bolts, so, and the holes are offset as well. So we're gonna put it with the offset to the left. This way that whole motor mount or ball nut mount will be on that pad. And so you're gonna have your motor on the right hand side and the bearing block is gonna be on the left hand side. So he's gonna take the tape measure here and we're gonna check both sides of the saddle and check and see if, uh, if the ball screw is squared up with the saddle. It's got a little bit of clay. Okay, now we're set, he's gonna tighten it down. Now, just because he did that with the alignment, we're getting this thing as close as we can, but uh, you know, it still may not be good enough at that point. You may still have to do some adjustments to it. I mean, we'll find out. All right, so he's got the table. We're gonna slide the table back on. And since he didn't have the gib in there, of course it goes on pretty easy. So then I'm gonna slide the gib back in there and tighten it down. Yeah, while you're at it, this is the best time to do that, to take the slack out of it. See if we can, you know, get it as stiff as you can. You'll notice that they have slots in them so that if you leave it a little bit loose and then put the other side on, everything will kind of self-align itself a little bit so you won't have as much problems trying to get it to line up. And then you can tighten everything down. Okay, so now we are putting the motor mount on to the other side. Same thing, just bolt it down and then we can check and we can see how everything's running. We can kind of eyeball that too as well so we can see where the motor shaft needs to go because you're going to want it to go right in the middle, of course. I'm not getting this very good because I'm at an angle, but trust me, it's in the middle. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing we did with Y. Run it back and forth. Run it clear to the end, both directions. Make sure it doesn't bind up on the ends. That's the main spot where you'll have problems with it or you can have problems is right at the very end of the stroke on both sides. So make sure you crank it all the way over and all the way back. Okay, so now we're gonna put the Z-axis on there. It's probably the trickiest one, simply because you have to find where to slide that boss in to the head and you're kind of doing it blind. So at least there's a, you know, there's a space and you should be able to feel it go into that space but the whole thing will just slide down in here which is really nice um, you don't have to worry about putting it in there in pieces and 
that kind of thing. You can tighten the whole thing down, get it all together, and then slide it down in there. Like I said, now you're kind of running half blind to find where that boss slides into the uh, into the hole that's in there. And then the nut for it, or the bolt actually, is right down here below the head. So we're checking now just to make sure that it's not in there any kind of crooked or anything. Can't, uh, there you go. So that it's square and flat on there so it doesn't go in there cockeyed. Just leave it loose. Don't tighten it yet. Yeah, and we're going to uh, start by sliding this in and tightening it down. You can leave it loose and then we'll tighten it down last. So he wants to check and make sure that everything is going to move the way we want it to. And then we're going to bolt down the, the top plate. That's kind of part of the self-aligning thing. Just doing that and it should, everything should line up good. And we can bolt down that top plate. And once we do that, all you have to do left is put this cover on here and we'll be done with the mechanical part of it anyway. Okay, the only other thing is you have to be able to put the coupling on with the motor. So you're going to put the coupling onto the motor itself and then you can just raise it up like so and you'll have an opening somewhere. There it is. <laughs> You'll have an opening so you can slide the motor and bolt the motor on and uh, onto here. And even if you don't bolt it on yet, um, so that you can get the other bolts on, it'll be attached and you won't have to worry about it anymore. So like I said a minute ago, actually the last thing we need to do here is put this cover plate on. You definitely need to have it on there keep any of the dust and dirt and stuff from getting in there so I mean it's real simple it just bolts right on but there you go and now we are finished <laughs>